This week, we're going to be talking about remotes in Git and how can we share the work that we're doing in one repository with another repository? Or how can I get all of the work that a colleague of mine is doing? Or if I'm working on an open source project, how do I get updates from that, from that project? How do I connect lots of different Git repositories together so I can work with them? So when we started talking about Git, we said that Git is a distributed, content addressable file system. And we've talked a lot about the content addressable file system part. So we've talked about how to create snapshots, how to make com commits, how to work with branches, how to um, branch off, how to merge back again. We've done a bunch of this stuff, but all of it's been local. And what we need to do now is we need to talk about the distributed part. Now, I know that you have already been dealing with this because you've had to work with GitHub. So you've had to do pull requests and you've had to do a little bit with remotes. And as I told you at the beginning, my philosophy with teaching Git is that I would like you to do some things on your own without me giving you all the background. You try it out and then I wanna come in and explain some of what's going on. If I try and explain all of it up front, it's too much. But if I talk to you about things you've already been doing and I fill in some, uh, some of the pieces, some of the gaps, then I think that's gonna work well. So let's go through this. For the work that I'm gonna to do today, I'm gonna to work on this telescope project and I'm gonna do examples of showing you what it's like to work on a real open source project that has lots of people working on it, sharing lots of things. And we'll, we'll I'll show you just a bunch of examples. Okay, so I'm gonna switch my view here so I can work in a terminal. So what we've said so far is that whenever you're gonna work on a project like this one, that the first step is always gonna be to fork it. We said that you fork because you don't own this repository. And so one of the reasons we do, uh, we work with remotes is because we want to be able to share work with each other, but we don't necessarily have the rights to all put our work in the same repository. So in Git, there's no such thing as a main repository. Like there isn't, um, th there isn't one repository that is in charge of all the other repositories. What there is instead is there's community consensus. So a group of people gets together and says, we're gonna put our code into this repository. That's where it's gonna live. But there's nothing special about this repository. It's just where the community decides that they're gonna send their pull requests, okay? So, we tend to refer to this repository in the open source community and in Git, we call this thing the upstream repository in the sense of, if you imagine water flowing down a mountain toward the sea, it's, it, it originates upstream. And anything that receives from that water source, we call those downstreams. So when I fork a repository, I already have a fork. This is my fork right here. My fork is downstream from this upstream repository. So if you, if you can get comfortable with that terminology, you're gonna see lots of people refer to the upstream of a project and you'll know what they, what they mean. They mean the place where the community puts all of its code, the place where new things happen the source of truth. So this is the source of truth and everything else is receiving things from it. Okay, so right away I have two repositories. I have this, I have this upstream repository and I have my fork. So we know that the, the next thing we need to do is we need to clone this onto our machine. So I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna clone it into the telescope directory. It's gonna download everything from here and now I have the code that is here inside of my fork is now on my computer, okay? So right now we have three repositories. We have the one on my computer, we have the one that I own on GitHub, my fork, and we have this one up here, the upstream. So what do we call this one? So Git refers to this one as a remote, and it calls it the origin, okay? So when you clone a repository, Git is automatically going to create for you a remote and it's gonna give it the name origin. 
Origin is just a short name or a friendly name for this URL right here, okay? And so if you type git remote in any, uh, in any git repository, you'll see something in there called origin if you forked it. Now, if I forked it from here, my origin would be this URL, not this URL. So you gotta be careful where you fork. You wanna fork from the one that you own. And the reason is because you wanna have full control over this one so you can push and pull changes, which we're gonna do here. Okay, so git remote dash v dash v means verbose, like give more information. So if I say git remote dash v, it says there's an origin and the origin is this URL right here. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to tell our repository here about the upstream repository here. How do we do that? So if you type git help and you want to know anything about more commands, we could say git help remote and it'll give you the manual page for working with this. And there's tons and tons of things you can do. And one of the things you can do is you can add, you can add a new remote. So I'm going to do that right now. You add a remote in, it's very similar to how you clone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and get the URL for it. Now, depending on, probably you want the HTTPS URL. If you don't have access, write access to this, you can just use the HTTPS, which is like a read-only uh, version of this. I use SSH only because I am one of the administrators of this, uh, of this, but just for purposes of what we're gonna do right now, I'll use HTTPS to show you the difference. So I'm gonna say git, remote add. Now the, the next thing is I need a short name and then I need a URL. So this short name can be anything that you want. So you could call this Seneca, you could call this main, you could, you could call this um, original, but what I would encourage you to do is to call it upstream. And every time you work on an open source project, your origin is your fork, the upstream is the original one where you first forked it. So I'm gonna say git remote add upstream and then I'm gonna put in this URL. So now if I say git remote, you'll see that I have, an, I have two remotes. I have an origin and I have an upstream. So I'm gonna say git remote dash V and you'll, can, you'll see that my origin is this one and my upstream is this one. So now this repository on my computer knows about two other repositories and there could be hundreds or thousands of other repositories, but maybe I don't care about those ones. Maybe I only care about these two and I want, uh, those, to, I want those to be uh, the ones that I have here. I'll show you about adding other ones in a little bit. Okay, so the next thing that I want you to notice is that when I look at my fork, my fork is out of date. So it says up here at the top, it says this branch is 155 commits behind Seneca C.master. So check out what's going on here. My master branch in my fork says that the last change was from April 13, and the last change uh, was at commit number 1,220. Over here, you can see that this changed 17 hours ago and there are 1,375 commits. So what's happened is I made this fork a long time ago and I don't always update my master branch because I don't care about the master branch on this repository. This is where I care about the master branch. So we have an upstream repo, that's where we put all of our changes, that's where we integrate everything. And, and, and so what you're gonna find is that after you fork or after you clone a repository, it's going to drift out of date with the original. So there is no automatic updates happening in Git. You have to do everything manually. Okay, so let's talk about how you can do updates. So let me show you, let me walk you through working with a, uh, with a remote. The first thing I wanna show you is how to read data, how to get data out of a, out of a particular repository. So let's do, let's do the following. You've got two commands available to you. They both work on remotes. So you can say git fetch and then the name of a remote. So for example, I could say git fetch origin or I could also say git pull origin. They do two different things. So I want to explain both of them and make sure you understand. 
Fetch is the first one, and fetch is always safe to do. You can fetch and it won't destroy your data. Neither of them will destroy your data, but fetch won't change what's going on in your current repository. Fetch will only download things, but it won't merge them. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna say git fetch origin, and it didn't do anything. So Unix commands, um, you know, often don't print out any details. And this one, like nothing happened because why did nothing happen? Well, two minutes ago, I cloned from this repository. And now over here, um, I'm fetching from it and nothing has changed. Nothing's changed. There's no differences uh, going on here. So that's, that's the reason uh, why nothing has changed. Let's try another thing. Let's try fetching from the upstream. So the upstream is supposedly ahead of me by 155 commits. So let's just look at my log right now. So right now my master branch is sitting on a commit from Monday, April 13th, this one right here, 19FC, okay? And let's see what happens. So I'm gonna say git fetch upstream. So it has downloaded a whole bunch of stuff, including a bunch of branches. So there's new branches here and also a bunch of tags. It's downloaded a whole bunch of things into my machine. Now let's look at where my, where my commits are. So I was at April 13th. Let's see where I am now. Git log. Uh, I'm still at Monday, April 13th. So that's good. Nothing has changed. So fetch downloaded the commits, but they aren't, they aren't here. I can't see them. All right. Well, where are they? So we're going to have to talk about this idea of uh, remote branches for a second. So let me show you something. I'm going to say git branch, and it's going to list all of my branches. I currently in this repository only have one branch and I'm on it right now called master. If I made another branch, git checkout dash B, let's call it uh, test. And I say git branch, you'll see that I have two branches. I have a master branch and I have a test branch. Okay. But that's not the whole situation. So if you say git branch dash A, in other words, git branch and show me all branches, it's going to print out a whole bunch of a whole bunch of things. So take a look at what we have here. We still have a master branch, we still have a test branch, but then we have all of these remote branches. And you can see that some of them are from the origin. So origin, for example, if we go looking in here, somewhere in here it will be origin master. And down here you can see some of them are upstream, like here's upstream master. So what you're seeing here, these remote branches are branches that exist in the other remote repositories, and they're not the same as my, as my local one. Okay, so this is a weird idea. So right now, let's go to the master branch. My master branch is sitting on 19FC, like so, that's, that's what it says. Now look at what it says over here. It says that my head is pointing to the same place as my master branch. I'm currently on the master branch, which is, that makes sense. That's the branch that I'm sitting on. And it says that there are some other branches that also point here. So one of them is origin slash master, origin master. So what is origin? Origin is this repository over here, my fork. And my fork is also sitting on this commit right here. So this is the last commit, 19FC3B, and this is 19FC3B. So my local repository and my remote repository are both sitting on this branch, uh, on this commit. So let's check this one out over here. So this one, it says that it is sitting on something from October the 6th, this commit right here. 
So this is 16D88, and this was made 17 hours ago, and this is the this is the commit. So where is that commit? Where is that master branch? Let me show you. So I'm gonna say git checkout, and I'm gonna say uh, I want to check out upstream slash master. So if I said check out master, what does that mean? It means switch to the master branch, which is local to this repository. So master means where I am in this repository. It, it's all, branches are always local to the repository where they are. And the reason for that is that you can have a master branch, I can have a master branch, 50 other people can have a master branch, and they don't have to be in the same place. Okay, so now let's do this. If I say git checkout origin master, what does it mean? That would mean check out the commit where the master branch of my origin repository is sitting, which would be this one. Now these happen to be the same thing. We know that because git log says that the master branch and the origin master are both sitting in the same place. But what if I did this, git checkout upstream master. So now if I say git show, it says you're looking at 16D88EB27 from October the 6th. And over here it says exactly the same thing. So the when I here, if I say, let's let's do this again. So I'm gonna say git checkout master. Master takes me back to what? Takes me back to where I was from April 13th. And if I say uh, git show upstream master, it's gonna show me this commit here. So you can see that I've got two different placeholders. Uh, whenever you fetch, so when we do git fetch and then remote name, what it's gonna do is it's going to download all of the commits and all of the branches for the remote repositories. And you can see them all here like this, okay? And each one of these is separated. So you know that there's a difference between the master branch, like if I do this, um, if I search for all of the masters in that list, you can see that I have a master branch. You can see that there is an origin master and there is an upstream master. So we have all of these different master branches that are, are happening. So when you fetch, you're downloading those things, but you're not doing a merge. So let's ask another question. How would I merge my current master branch so that it's in the same spot as my upstream master? In other words, instead of being 155 commits out of date, how could I get myself updated to this commit here? Well, what I could do, we already know how to do a merge. So on the master branch, I could say git merge upstream master like this. So that would, that would mean go get the upstream master branch and merge it into the master branch that I have here. So if I run this command, what did it just do? A lot, it, look at all this work. So notice what happened. I said git merge upstream master and it said that it's going to do what kind of a merge? Fast forward. So why is it a fast forward merge? Because my master branch was behind the other branch by 155 commits. So it's just moved mine up. And you can see all of the files that have been modified and updated and deleted. Lots of things have been created, lots of things, all kinds of things have happened. So let's take a look at this. If I say git log, what do we see? You can see that my master branch is pointing to this commit right here, which is the same commit as we see over here. And you can see that it's also pointing to the same location as upstream master. Okay, so where is my origin master? Remember what origin was. Origin is still 155 behind. So if I said git show origin master, 
you'll see that it's still back on April 13th, one, <clears throat> excuse me, 19 FC 3B. So we've got all of these different versions of the same branch that are all, all in different places around, like in different repositories. And when you fetch, fetch downloads, but doesn't do a merge. Okay, so let me show you the alternative. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna reset my master branch. Remember how to do this? I'm gonna take my master branch and I'm gonna say dash capital B because I wanna move it. So I'm gonna move my master branch. Where am I gonna move it? I'm gonna move it back where it was. I'm gonna move it back to origin slash master. So I'm gonna move it back 155 commits. And so now I'm going to look at this, git status or git show. And you can see that I'm back on 1.9. I'm back in the same position as my origin is. So we said that one workflow is to do git fetch from uh, upstream. And then after we do that, uh, to do a merge. Git, after we do this, we could say git merge um, upstream. We could do that. We could do two commands like that. Download it, merge it. And if we wanted to, we could say only do it if it's a fast forward merge, fast forward only. So we could do something like that, okay? But I'm gonna show you how to do that in one command. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say git pull upstream master. Okay, so what does this do? Running this command is not dangerous, but it's going to do something. So I want you to understand what you're doing when you run this command, because it's not clear what's going on in the background. So when you do a pull, it's first gonna do a fetch. So it's gonna download everything from this remote on this branch. And then what it's going to do is it's going to merge the upstream master into your local master. This could be what you want to do, but may not be what you want to do. So just be aware, especially when you're working on a topic branch, when you're working on a branch to fix a bug, you probably don't want to do this. So my advice to you is don't pull into topic branches, just pull the master branch. So let me just show you how it works first of all. So I'm gonna say git pull upstream master. Before I do this, just to confirm, git show, you can see that I'm on 19FC from Monday, April 13th. So now it pulls down and look what it did. It did the same thing that we just did a second ago manually. It did a, it did a fast forward from this commit to this commit. And you'll see that now if I do git log, you'll see that my master branch is in the same position as the upstream master at 16D88EB, okay? So just to review, git fetch upstream means download everything that is in the upstream that I don't have. Like if I run this right now, nothing happens because I have everything already. If I say git fetch origin, nothing happens because I already have everything that's in the origin. So if you do a fetch, fetch is always safe. Fetch will download, but not merge. So it won't mess up any of the work that you're doing right now. You can then manually merge if you want to. And remember what we do a merge by saying, git check out the branch to merge into, so you go to the branch that you want to merge into, and then you say git merge branch to merge the one that you want to merge into this one, okay? And if it's a remote, you could say git merge upstream slash master. I could do something like that. If I say git pull upstream master, if I do that, then it's going to do a fetch and then it's gonna do a merge. So if I do this right now, nothing happens because it says you are already up to date, okay? Git pull origin master, 
already up to date. There's nothing to be merged. Everything that is on the other one, you have on this one. So now my, my code is up to date. I have all of these things, um, you know, they're, they're, they're all together. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about getting code from other people. So let's go back to the main telescope branch and let me go to the pull requests. So right now, if I look at all of these pull requests, you can see that there are pull requests by one, two, three, uh, four, four different people, which means that there are four different repositories that have changes that I don't have, okay? So let's go through these, let's try this out. So this is the first. So if you look at a pull request, a pull request is a, is a request to take something that lives in another repository on another branch and to pull it into, into here. In other words, to merge it into the master branch. So this really says merge all of the work on this branch in this repository into this repository's master branch. Okay, so what if I wanted to test this on my local machine? How would I do this? Okay, so you'll see here, if I go and click on a user, so I'll do this, open up a new tab. I go to the user, I go to the user's fork. So this is a fork, just like I have a fork, right? And you'll see that the, the, um, the way that the URLs look is gonna be very similar. So just to show you, git remote-v looks like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this URL and I'm gonna say git remote add Okay, so I'm gonna add a remote. So now git remote dash V looks like this. And if I look at these other pull requests, let's just add remotes for everybody. Here's another one. Okay, I go and take a look. Here is the telescope branch. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna grab this URL and I'll say, uh, git remote add and whatever the, the word that you use here can be anything you want. So, you know, I might, I might change the name, right? And that's fine. It's whatever would make sense to you. So I'm going to add another remote, git remote dash V. You see that I have one, two, three, four different remotes. Now, what else do I need? Go back to pull requests. Who else made a pull request? Uh, Calvin has pull requests. So let's do the same thing for Calvin. Whoops. Uh, this one. And telescope. I know it's going to be slash telescope. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to grab the URL. Remote add C3. Okay, get remote dash V. One, two, three, four, five different remotes. And I think there's one more. Uh, I think Matthew has, yeah. Okay, so this one here from Matthew. Uh, telescope and grab the URL get remote add okay so now I'm in a situation now where I have a repository on my computer which came from this repository here. The upstream repository is known, but then I also have a bunch of colleagues. So I have a bunch of people who are also working on this project with me. So maybe you're doing, uh, you're working on an open source project and there's five other developers, or there's 50, or there's 100, or 10,000, it doesn't matter how many there are. 
What you can do is you can pull in all of the work that they have. How would I do it? Okay, let's think about this. How would I get all of the work that Calvin's doing, for example? So I would say git fetch and then the name of the remote. And it's going to download everything that is in his repository that I don't have here. And I can do the same thing for all of these. So I could say git uh, fetch, git fetch, uh, git remote dash v, git fetch. Okay, so now take a look at this git branch dash a look at all the branches that I have so I have a master branch I have a test branch but then I have remote branches for every single one of these remotes that I downloaded so for each user you can see that all of the branches that they have here's my origin Pedro Matthew stuff upstream stuff so my Local repository suddenly has all of this awareness of where everybody else is and the work that they're doing. Okay, so let's let's do an example here. So if we go back to these pull requests, so if I take this pull request right here, for example, Calvin has a branch called Kubernetes. So if I were to over here, if I were to look git branch dash a and I'll grep for Kubernetes. And you can see that there is a branch called remotes C3ho Kubernetes. So I'm gonna check this branch out. I'm gonna say git checkout dash b Kubernetes. I'm gonna make a branch called Kubernetes and it's gonna point where? So it's not gonna point to my head, which is where I am right now. Instead, it's gonna point to name of the remote slash name of the branch. Now I want you to notice what it says. It says branch Kubernetes is set up to track a remote branch Kubernetes from C3Ho, okay? So this is, this is called a tracking branch. A tracking branch has some awareness of the remote that it goes with. So it knows that the Kubernetes branch that I have here is it's connected to the Kubernetes branch that Calvin's working on. And if I were to pull, it would, it would know what to do. So normally what I would, well, let me just show you first of all, git show. You can see that I am now sitting on code from Saturday, April 11th, and it's 186C0. And if I go to the commits, you can see that that is exactly where Calvin is too. He's at this commit right here. Uh, 1860 from April the 11th. So now if you look at my branches, I have three branches that are local to this repository. I have a Kubernetes branch, a master branch, and a test branch. But git branch dash a, there's all these other branches that are sort of, they're, they're not hidden, but they're remote branches that are like bookmarks to where these other repositories are. Let's try another one. So if I go back to the pull requests, let's say this one right here. Uh, where is this one? So this is, I'm gonna do git checkout, and this is PR number 1165. So let's say I, I wanna check out dash B PR dash 1165. And where am I gonna, where does this branch point? Well, I have to give the name of the remote and I have to give the name of the branch. So here, 115 my feeds, 1155 my, is it not gonna do it for me? One, oh, sorry. Issues, 115 my feeds. So now I'm sitting on code from 15 hours ago. So I'm sitting on code CA768, CA768, right? So I've got, I've got the exact same code as this pull request sitting in my machine right here. So I can, I can test it. 
I could run the code, I could build it, I could read it, I could do whatever I want. So all of these pull requests are now sitting in my local machine. So here's another one. Uh, this, let's, let's pull this one out. Git checkout dash B uh, PR1162. PR1162 is name of the name of the remote uh name of the remote slash name of the branch issue number what is it 1078 so that's how i'm going to grab this now i'm sitting on i'm sitting on this commit right here uh is that true no i'm sitting on which commit am i on 68608 uh, banner update, banner update. Oh yeah, 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 sorry, I'm reading the wrong thing. I'm sitting right here. So I'm in the exact same position as the pull request. So it's really easy to add a remote and then to, so just, just to review, get remote, add name of the remote, URL of the remote. So if we, whatever you want to call it, then, then you can do git fetch name of remote, and it will download all of that code, all the commits uh, from all the different, you know, branches that that repository is working on and you can work with them. Fetch doesn't do a merge. So when you do, let's go back to, go back to master. When you do a pull, a pull is going to do a merge. So let me let me show you what would happen here. What would happen if I did this? If I said git pull, um, what if I did that? So think about what this means. I'm on my master branch. And I'm gonna say git pull from this remote, this branch. And what it will do is it will cause it to download everything. It will do a fetch, but then it will also do a merge. So watch, I'm gonna do this right now. Okay, so you, can, it, you see what's happened here? It wants to do a three-way recursive merge into the master branch. So I'm gonna let that happen. And I'm gonna show you my log. So my log now looks like this. I have a I have a merge commit that is merging this. It's basically merging two commits. It's merging this commit and this commit. So this one here, DD386, is this one right here. So this is not what I wanted to do on my master branch. I, I don't really want this to be here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset. I'm going to reset my master branch to where the upstream master is because that's where it should be. So I'm going to say git checkout dash capital B master upstream slash master. And now you can see that that merge commit is gone. So you have to be really careful. If you want to just look at some code, you want to review it, you want to test it, you're working with a partner and your partner says, can you try this branch for me and see if you can get it to work? You want to say git fetch remote name. You don't want to do a pull. However, if you want to fetch and merge, then you do a pull from the remote and then the branch, whichever, what the, whatever the remote branch is that you want to do. The most typical workflow for doing a pull is for you to do git pull upstream master. So what I would suggest to you is don't ever commit anything on the master branch. Do everything on a topic branch. And then every time before you start working on a new topic branch, you'll always do git pull upstream master. And it will download and merge all of the new changes. If there are any new changes, it'll pull them in and you'll be able to work with them this way. Okay, so, so far all we've done is reading. We've looked at things, but we haven't, we haven't uh, made any changes yet. So let's, let's do another change. So let me go back to my,
Okay, so right now, the upstream is sitting on this commit right here. It's sitting on 16D, we've, we've seen this, 16D, okay? This is the commit that it's sitting on. My, my origin is behind by 155 commits. How could I fix that? So on this machine right here, if I do git log, where is my master branch? My master branch is sitting on 1688E from October the 6th. This is where the master branch is. And this is where the upstream master branch is as well. Okay, so let's do something. I'm going to say git push origin master. What will that do? So we said that pull origin master, what would that do? It would go to the origin repo. It would download everything on the origin repos master branch that we don't have. So it would do a fetch and then it would merge into the, into the master branch on this one here. If I change this to a push, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to send all of the commits that are on this machine's re master branch up to the origin, and then it's going to try and do a merge. So let's see what happens. Git push origin master. Watch over here. Okay, so it says master branch has been moved from this commit to this commit. If I go over here and I refresh this, you'll see that it says that this branch is now even with c.master, okay? So that means if I say git log, look what has happened. It says that my master branch is pointing to this commit. The upstream master is pointing to this commit. The origin master is pointing to this commit as well. So you can see that all of these different remotes, they're all pointing to the same place. So all of them are here. Okay, so let's do, a, let's do another thing. Let's make a change. So let's go through the process that we do. Um, if I say, I'm gonna do uh, git checkout dash B, let's say we're gonna fix an issue. We're gonna fix issue 5555. It doesn't exist, but let's say we're gonna make a new, a new branch. We're gonna make this change. And I'm going to make a modification to the readme file. And I'm gonna say, uh, let's just delete all these lines like that. I'm gonna save it. Git diff shows me that I deleted a whole bunch of lines. Git status shows me that I've got one file that has been modified, the readme file. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the readme file. I'm not gonna do this. <laughs> I've talked to a number of you this week who have gotten into problems by doing git add dot, which would mean add everything in the current directory. Don't ever do this. Don't be lazy. Type your file names out, readme.md. I don't wanna add everything. I just wanna add this one file. So I'm gonna put this in the staging area and then I'm gonna commit it. Git commit dash m modify readme, like so, okay? I'm gonna push this up to my origin. Git push origin issue one, two, three, four. So what this says is push upload everything on this branch to the origin and merge it into this branch here. Now, if the branch doesn't exist, then what it's gonna do is it's going to create it. So let's try this. I'm gonna push it up. and it says I've created this new branch. Now over here on the left, you can see that issue 555 has recent pushes. I could click here to make a pull request. I could also change to issue 555 here. So here's my issue 555 branch. And you could see that the readme looks different. I've deleted all of the information in the readme. Okay, so let's, look at a situation that a lot of you get into, which is I'm going to make a modification to the readme file. I'm gonna edit the readme file on GitHub. 
Uh, what is telescope? Uh, it's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna make a change. And I'm gonna preview my changes. It looks like this, this is my change. And I'm going to make a commit. So I'm gonna say update uh, readme, update readme to include extra line. And I'm gonna commit this directly to this branch. And I'm gonna say commit changes. Okay, it's amazing, like this, okay? So that's what just happened here. Now, if you look at the log over here, you'll see that I have modified the readme. That was Wednesday, October the 7th. But if you look at the history of this file, you'll see that this commit here, modify the readme, there's a new commit on top of it right here. So on my local machine, I need to get that commit that is on GitHub on my origin, but not over here. So how would I do that? I'm gonna say git pull origin issue one, two, three, four, like this. It downloads and it does what? It does a fast forward merge like so, okay? Fast forward merge. So another scenario that people are gonna get into is you're gonna get into a scenario where, let's, let's go do the same thing again. I'm gonna edit this and I'm just gonna put in, a, it's so amazing. How about that? Let's make it bold. Perfect, okay? Make another commit. Um, Make it bold, commit it directly to this, like so. So now, if you look at the history of this, I've got one, two, three. And if you look at the history of this, you'll see that I've got modify the readme and update the readme to include the extra line, right? But the make it bold change I don't have. So what if I change the file over here? And I, it's amazing, and I go in here and I say, um, I add another line, save it, add it, um, include an extra line. So what I've got now is I have two divergent histories. So on my local machine, I modified the readme, I added the extra line, and then I also included an extra line here. On my origin, I have make it bold. I have this other thing here. So watch what happens this time. If I say git push origin issue 5555, it's gonna come back and it's gonna say, I can't do it. It says updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you do not have locally. This is usually caused by another repository pushing to the same ref. You may want to first integrate, integrate the remote changes. Okay. Now what did, what happened? What's happened here is that if I try and push this line of commits over here, I'm going to lose this commit right here because they've diverged. So if you merge a pull request from somebody onto your master branch and you forget to pull your master branch and then you edit your master branch and you try and push it, you're gonna run into this error. You're gonna see, um, you're gonna see this error where it says you can't do what you wanna do, right? Uh, like so. So now you'll see on the internet, some people will say to do this. <laughs> uh, it's like, um, you know, you lock yourself out of your house and the internet says, well, one way to get in is just to break down the door. Or another way to get in is to rip the roof off your house and climb in the top. Sure, you could do that. Break your windows and climb in through the window. That is a solution to the problem, but it's not the, <laughs> it's not the solution that you want. 
So if you force this, or if you say dash F, it will work. Git will say, all right, I'm gonna do what you asked me to do. And I'm gonna basically delete what's there and, and do what's here. And you're gonna lose all this work. So this is not what you wanna do. Instead, what you wanna do is you wanna first pull in these changes. Git pull origin issue one, two, three, four, like this. If I pull these in, what is it gonna do? It's gonna download everything from the origin on this branch and it's gonna merge it. Let's try it. So it's gonna do a recursive merge. And now if you look at my log, you'll see that I have a, I have a merge between these two commits. So the work that I added was this and the work that was added in the other one is over here as well. Both of them are here. So now let's try and push again. Git push origin issue one, two, three, four. This time it works. And so now you can see that all of the commits are here. And if I said git log like so, you can kind of get a picture of what happened here. So you can see that uh, there was this there was this divergence where this commit got added in a different location than the other. Okay, so when you're when you're doing a fetch, you're downloading. When you're doing a pull, you're downloading and merging. When you're doing a push, you're uploading and merging. And the way that Git works is it will only do that merge if it can do a fast forward merge. So you want to make sure in your repository that you're all merged and everything's clean before you push in order to, you know, to be able to push, put all of that data back up to the, um, the remote repository. Okay. So this is a, a good place to pause. Um, but let me, let me review very quickly what I think your default workflow should be whenever you're working on, uh, when you're working on a project. You decide you want to work on a project like Telescope. Step one, fork it. So make sure you have a fork. Then in your remotes, you need to have an origin which points to your fork and you need to have an upstream which points to the original like so, okay? Every time before you start working on a new bug or fixing an issue, what I want you to do is I want you to go to the master branch like so and I want you to say git pull upstream master. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna fetch everything on the upstream that you don't have. So if, if other people have done a whole bunch of work, you're gonna get all their work. You're gonna download that. You're gonna merge it into your master branch and it will do a fast forward merge. So when I pull this down, it will make sure that your master branch is up to date. So now my master branch is up to date with the master branch that's up here. At this point, what you can do is you can say git checkout dash B issue one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna fix issue number one, two, three, four. I'm gonna make a new branch. I'm gonna go over to this branch and I'm gonna add and I'm gonna commit and I'm gonna do all my work on here. And when I'm done, I'm gonna push origin issue one, two, three, four like that. I'm gonna push that up and that's gonna be on my fork and I'm gonna do a pull request. When I do a pull request, I'm gonna I'm gonna be passing all of the changes that are in this branch on my fork over to the original one over here. So if I was gonna start working on issue one, two, three, five, what would I do? I would check out the master. I would git pull upstream master, make sure it's up to date. And then I would git check out dash B issue one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, five, whatever. And you'll do this over and over and over and over again. And if you do this and you don't, if you never ever commit to master, don't ever commit on master here, because if you do, it's going to make your master go out of line with the other master. 
If you ever do this and you need to get it back again, remember that all of those branches are still available to you. Git branch dash A, they're all here. So you can always do this, git checkout dash capital B master upstream slash master, meaning reset my local master branch to point to the same location as the upstream master. And then you can pull from the upstream master to get whatever changes are there that you don't have. Okay. Okay, good. I'm going to pause it there and um, we'll practice it this week. And next week I want to talk about rebasing.